Hi everybody, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. I'm Richard and today we're going to make another holster and this one I've been threatening to make for quite some time. This is the uh, the holster for this gun, which is a 1873. It's the Cimarron Model P with a seven and a half inch barrel, the cavalry model with black grips on it. It didn't come with black grips. It came with the uh, standard walnut grips on it, but this is a pair I made and you've probably seen it in another video. Um, but this one is for the character Paladin from the TV series Have Gun Will Travel. And this was a guy that, uh, it was a Western that was on in the late 50s, I think it was, somewhere around there. Um, but anyways, Paladin was uh, the main character, and that's the only thing we know him as. We don't know his real name or anything. But uh, he was kind of a uh, mercenary, good guy type thing. Lived in a really uh, posh, lavish hotel in San Francisco, but would travel because he had a gun. And... Um, he would take care of business for people who needed help. That's the reason he had these little calling cards here. It said, have gun, will travel, wire pallet in San Francisco. They'd get a hold of him, give him the message. He'd go out and take care of your problems. Now, I have seen a lot of holsters online that you can buy that people call the Paladin holster. And I have not seen any that look exactly like the movie or the TV show holster. And that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to make one that is close, as close to the holster in the series as we can possibly get. Now, this one is uh, real similar to the uh, man with no name holster I got hanging up behind me there, somewhere up in there. And uh, since I've got that pattern already made, I'm going to modify it to make it look similar to the actual holster that it needs to be. It is a uh, drop loop and kind of what they call a cutaway holster right there. It does not cover up the... Um, the trigger guard or anything. It uh, actually leaves it pretty well exposed. So we're gonna make the proper holster for it. And we're also gonna make the proper belt, or at least try to anyways. Um, the, the belt itself was just a plain black belt. And now the only really embellishment on it was this little emblem right here, the little uh, knight, chest knight, um, that is on the side of the holster. And this one is a really good reproduction I got from a guy on uh, eBay that makes these. And I will put a link in the description down below where you can find him if you want to pick one of these up. He makes several different ones. He also makes smaller ones that can go on the grips. But in the series, Paladin did not have this on the grips. He only had it on the holster. Now, since this has got little pins on the back of it to attach to the holster, I may have to shorten those up a little bit. And I got to get some... Um, push nuts is what they call them to go on there to hold these onto the holster and I'm going to have to make two layers. Paladin's holster in the series was two layers and it needs to be two layers because I do not want these and the push nuts to be able to touch the firearm itself in there. It will definitely scratch it up. Uh, maybe not this part. This is aluminum I think or it may be a pewter. Um, but the push nuts that go on there are going to be steel. So we're going to attach it with both the push nuts and some uh, contact adhesive. And that'll really help give it a good bond to the holster, I hope. Uh, it's just a plain black holster. Nothing fancy on it. Some of the ones I've seen have been made with white stitching on it. And a lot of the pictures, I've looked at a lot of the pictures from the series. And there is more than one holster that was used in here. And I can tell because... It's a drop loop holster, and there are some that are a little bit different. We're going to make this close to the one that's used in the opening scene where he uh, pulls the gun out and points it directly at the camera and then decocks it and reholsters it. And I think that is the holster that is going to be the most memorable one that people remember from the series because it was on every single episode. Um, and we're going to try, like I said, to make it the best I can. The biggest problem with this thing is going to be that, as far as I can tell, there were nearly 40 bullet loops on this holster. That's a lot of bullet loops. The most I've done, I think, is 12, and that takes a while to do, too. But we're going to try to get 40 or at least as many of them as I can get on there. Now, the gun itself... Uh, most of the time when you buy one of these, you buy them in 45 Colt or 357. This one is actually chambered in 4440 or 44 Winchester centerfire. Uh, the 4440 designation is 44 is the diameter of it in a 40 grain 
case that will hold 40 grains of black powder since it was one of the older guns that's the way they designate a lot of them a 4570 was a 45 caliber bullet with 70 grains of black powder in it so i got this one in 4440 and after much 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 searching i was able to find a couple hundred rounds of ammo for it, it is a really tough one to find because they only make them during a very small run during a year because most of the time at one time it was the most popular cartridge out there uh, but most of the time nowadays the only people that use them are going to be the cowboy action shooters but anyways i got my big piece of paper laid out here i've got my template from this was from the gambler royale holster that's up there and it's going to be a little modification of this one but since i've already got this one made i know where all my dimensions are i know that this belt fits me and it's going to be the same ranger style belt with the drop loop on it and uh, the billets for the buckle itself inch and a half buckle and the little paladin emblem is the only real embellishments on here other than maybe 40 bullet loops anyways i'm going to get to working out a pattern here and then we'll get some leather cut out and get this thing put together it's going to be a lot of sewing it's going to be double layer on both the holster and i will put black suede on the back side of the belt just because i personally like that it covers up the back side of the stitching on the bullet loops and it helps keep it from sliding down on your clothes that uh that suede kind of gives a nice good grip to it and everything anyways lots of work let's get busy Okay, so I've been working on the belt part of it here. I've got my two billet ends done. Uh, this is the one for the, well, the belt part of it there, the adjustable part of it. And I did have to shorten it up a little bit because I figured it was just a little too long. And then I got the buckle part of it done. Now I can't see how the buckle part is attached to the belt, but I can see how this part is attached to the belt. So I just took that same pattern that's sewn on there and transferred it over to this side and also stitched onto this around the, uh, the buckle itself. And then I'll stitch it the same way on the belt. That way, I, all I can imagine is they use the same pattern, I guess. And instead of doing the traditional um, oval end that they did on there, I can see that it is just slightly tapered with rounded corners on it. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm trying to figure out the bullets here. These are 4440 WCFs or uh, 44 WCFs or 4440s. Either way you want to call them that. And right now I've got 32 of them laid out on there. And the pictures I see from screenshots from the show, there's a pretty good distance between the actual um, holster itself that sits right here and the bullets. And same thing for here and the billet. So I want to kind of center, the center of the belt is right here. And, and that's 32 rounds. Whoops. That's 32 rounds. And I think that's just as many as I'm going to put on there. Now, another thing I've tried to find good screenshots of is how the bullet loops attach to the belt. Traditionally, like the ones I've got on the wall behind me, I sew them on. Sew in between each one of them. And a couple of the pictures I see where you can see this end of it, it doesn't really look that way. It looks like they're laced through the belt. And what they'll do is they'll take a piece of, uh, a piece of leather and cut a slot in the belt and then run the leather up through it, wrap it around the bullet and pull it back through that slot and pull it tight. I don't like doing them that way, but I think that's the way they did it. I cannot see anywhere on the ends here where there's a tab and it's sewn down to the belt. So I think the end piece is in there and then maybe a stitch or two to hold it there. It's, it's really a clean looking design. So that might be what I do with these. It can save quite a bit of stitching because normally I stitch a zigzag pattern. I go down, across, down, across, down, across, down, across, all the way to the end there. And with 32 bullet loops, that's really a lot of stitching. And here it is. The number one reason why I even built this studio is because I've got a much bigger table now. And I got some leather here from Weaver. They don't sponsor me, but um, I do like going there. Looks like I could have used an even bigger table. This is a nice piece of leather. It's the nice thing about going there is I actually get to pick them out myself. Okay, I've got this big old honking piece of leather here cut. Uh, this is my waist piece, which is not gonna be get wasted because that's actually a nice size piece of leather there. 
and I can get several things out of this. So we're just gonna roll this up and get it out of the way. And I'm gonna cut my belt out. Now the belt on the Paladin holster is, it's three inches wide except for where the holster attaches. That's another inch lower there. So that's four. Actually, I think I changed it just a hair. It's three and a half inches wide there. So I did change it a little bit because I thought it just looked too far down there. Now this is a strap cutter and the strap cutter has measurements on there and it also has a blade embedded in the wood there and you can adjust the blade. You can adjust, you loosen this up, slide this in there, slide it on the scale where you want it. We want it three and a half inches. It's kind of a pain to get it set up because things move around a little bit on it, but once you get it set, it's pretty much good to go. Okay, so we'll snug that down a little bit. You can also adjust the gap right here because that gap is, you know, depends on the thickness of your leather there. You can loosen these screws up here to adjust it there. And then you got this little wing nut here on the end, you can adjust it. And we want to make sure get that scrap piece back real quick and we want to make sure that that piece of leather will go in there it is a little bit tight you don't want it too tight but you don't want it too loose either okay I've got my piece of leather in there now it slides between the two boards and you're pulling that knife down through there I'll get a start on here and show you how it works it's a very, very sharp blade on there. So all we got to do is pull it down that straight edge and then we'll get it cut the width we need it. So we're going to cut a three and a half inch piece off of here and then that'll be our blank for our belt. And there we go, one three and a half inch wide belt, all nice and even on both sides of it. And now I'm left with a straight edge on my piece here. So the next belt I wanna do, all I gotta do is set my strap cutter to the width I want, pull it down there and it's ready to go. Plenty, plenty long enough to go around me. Almost one and a half times. Okay, so I went ahead and cut out some strips of the uh, three quarter inch. Now the piece I had on my test piece was uh, five ounce. This is six ounce and it's a good consistent six ounce. It looks like anyways. I do not have a skiver and a skiver is a tool that you would use to thin out the leather, which would be great, but usually they are fairly expensive. Um, so that's one of the reasons I don't have one, but I did cut me three pieces here. This will be plenty to do it. I mean, I'm going to have to stitch a couple of these together on the back side of the, of the uh, belt. So you won't see that anyways. We'll get those put out of the way and then we'll get this big old honking piece of leather right here and get my pattern, which is right here and get it laid out on this thing. And we'll see where everything's going to come out at. That doesn't give me a whole lot of material at the bottom there to hold the weight up. This will get stitched all the way around. Even the hole there will get stitched all the way around it. That'll reinforce that hole to keep it from pulling and stretching and tearing apart after I get the layer of suede on the back of it too. A lot of holes. Okay, let's pump the brakes for a minute here. Uh, I got everything laid out on here on the belt, and I went ahead and cut out my billets for the buckle end and the strap end and I went ahead and cut out a keeper that's going to have to go on there because a ranger belt the two main parts of the belt overlap and you got to have something to keep it from flopping around like that so I got the keeper cut out and I got all my holes laid out on here and I laid out 
30 holes on here. And I said that I thought the belt had 40 bullet loops on it in the TV show. But when I laid out the bullets and I looked at it, I thought something's not right here. And I, so I went and watched a couple more episodes and I found an episode, I think it's season two, episode three or something like that. Uh, to Catch a Tiger is what it's called. There is a shot in there where he holds his holster, his whole belt and everything over his shoulder and I could get a really good count on it. And he has 28 bullet loops on it. I have no idea why there's 28 on there. That's what I come up with. And you'll see here, I show uh, the way I counted them and everything. But 28 bullet loops on there doesn't make any sense. And I contacted Santee with Arizona Ghost Riders and I said, hey, why would there be 28 on there? And he said, maybe the, you know, whoever built the holster for the show just ran out of leather or something, or that's all they could get on there. There's no logic to it which really baffled me. Usually I do like 10 loops, so you have two loads of five if you're doing a cowboy action shooting. They only load five rounds in a uh, revolver. Or I've done um, 12 loops on it, two loads of six, if you wanna you know, risk it and fill the holster or fill the revolver up with all six rounds, that's up to you. Or I did one where I've got 18 loops on her, that's three loads of six, but there was no logic in the 28 that I could see anyways, but I put 30 on here. So, you know, that's, you look at it any way, any way you want. 30 works out okay. So now that I've got all the pieces cut out for the belt part of it, I still have to cut all these holes in there. And I'm debating on whether or not to go ahead and do the two holes and cut the sides or just wait till I can get me a punch to punch those out. Three quarter inch oval punch would make it a whole lot easier. Now I'm going to get started on the holster part of it. And you can see here in the background, I've got the revolver put in the man with no name holster up there. And it hangs out of the bottom there quite a bit. So the holster is the basic shape in the man with no name as what he used in there. But there's quite a few differences in it. Obviously, it's a lot longer. And the way it's cut, the strap part of it where it hangs over the belt there and the... Uh, the apron that goes on the back of it is going to be different. So we're going to get to working on that. I want to get all the parts and pieces cut out first because I want to dye them all. I want to trim the edges, bevel the edges and everything, and then dye everything. It's a lot of work, but let's get started on it. Okay, so I got me a manageable size piece of paper cut out here. And there are several differences between the Man With No Name holster and Paladin's holster. The bottom on here is a little more curved on the Man With No Name. So this is going to be a little straighter across the bottom. Not to mention that there's quite a bit of difference in the length of the firearms themselves. A little bit different shape up here, and then the apron is obviously going to be longer. Um, the curve in here is a little different. The curve on the top is a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace this out, and then I'm going to modify it, and then we'll see about cutting it out. Okay, you can see here, here's one that failed, there's two that failed, and here's the third one, and I think the third one is going to do it. The apron on the back there normally would taper down and follow the contour of the holster part, but on this one, it gets a little bit wider there, nice gentle curves on it and everything. Uh, it tapers in pretty narrow right here, maybe even a little more narrow than what I made it, but I think that's going to do it. And I'm going to be making this uh, probably out of um, some 5-ounce and some 3-ounce, somewhere around there. I'll put the 5-ounce on the outside of it and the 3-ounce on the inside. And the biggest reason for that is I got to put the Paladin emblem on there, which is going to ride up kind of high there. And it's got these little pins on the back here. I will have to cut those down, and I got some push nuts to go on there. That's I, I think that's going to do it right there, so I'm going to... Um, Get this thing cut out of leather next. Okay, <clears throat> got my two pieces cut out here. This is gonna be the outside. This is the thicker stuff. It is make sure i think this is six ounce actually yep just a hair over six ounce and this is 
Well, this is right at four ounce. So 10 ounce, that's a good weight for a holster. Now you'll notice, you notice one thing, there's two different shades right here. This is a little darker. I probably have this one a little bit longer. Um, maybe a different tannery or something, but it doesn't matter too much because I'm going to be using black dye on it and I'm going to be using the Feedings Pro dye, which is the oil-based dye with the alcohol carrier in it. And these two are going to get glued together just like this. And then they're going to get stitched all the way around this thing, which is going to be fun. That's a lot of stitching. And what I like to do before I bevel the edges on this, and I want to bevel the edges before I do all the gluing and staining or dyeing and everything, I like to um, put my stitch groove on there because I've got a nice square edge right now, and it's easier for that little stitch groover to follow along that stiff, straight edge than it is to follow along a rounded one. I tend to slip every now and then when I do a rounded edge. And I like to case the whole thing, even though I'm not going to be doing any tooling or anything in the middle of it, the reason I do that is because I found that it'll affect the dye every now and then, and you'll get kind of uneven areas where you wet it if you've only done the edges, and then you dye it. Sometimes the edges will come out a little darker. It probably won't be as noticeable or probably won't affect it at all if I do uh, black, but just to be safe, and it doesn't hurt anything. So I've got my stitch groover. This is just going to put an indention in there. It's not going to cut the groove out. Otherwise, I would have not cased it when I did it. Um, I, this just pushes a little dent down in there. So I've got it set up for an eighth inch and I'm going to work my way around it. Okay, I've got my stitch groove established all the way around there and I'm not going to bother stitching or grooving the liner piece because this is the part that gets seen right here. Some of it will be seen, like the inside right here will be seen but i think it'll be okay you won't be able to see this side this will be showing this will be showing this will not almost none of this will be showing i also have to get my um my emblem put on there before i do any gluing and everything so where this thing is gonna go only got one chance to get it right really we're going to call it right there and see what we get. Now I'm going to let this dry out a little bit. And once it gets stiffened back up and dried out a little bit, it'll make it a lot easier to edge this. Now I am going to edge this piece right here too, because I need that to be, well, at least not this part of it, because this is going to be sandwiched in between there. But the rest of it will be open and it's going to be appear to be single layer. So I need it to be kind of rounded. Um... Uh, maybe the bottom there too, just not these two sides. I will not bevel those. Anyways, more stuff to do. Think that'll work. All right, we'll let those tack up and it shouldn't take very long. Now the first piece is just about done and the second one will be done here in just a few minutes that I can carefully stick them together. Okay, now here comes the fun part. They are just ever so slightly tacky. Nothing's coming off on my fingers. I got to get these things lined up as close to perfect as I can because once they're on there, that's it. They're stuck. Not too bad at all. Okay, I've got all my holes punched in here and I discovered that I almost royally screwed up. Since I based this off my man with no name holster hanging up there behind me, I uh, I thought, well, this will fit this gun. But and, I, and when I was punching the holes, I thought, you know, it's nice that I don't have to punch through a welt on here too. 
then I turned around and looked at the holster and realized I put a welt in there. So I got a piece of, uh, this is 11 ounce right here, a little scrap piece I got left over. And I'm going to cut a welt for this thing because that would really suck to sew this all together and then realize it's not going to fit. So what I'm going to do is find my pen, trace the outside of it here, just where the welt needs to be. Then I'm going to get this cut out and fit on there and then punch the holes through that. It gives me another layer to punch through, but it really makes the volume inside the holster a lot more so that the barrel will fit down in there properly. Okay, I've got my welt glued on there and I let it hang over the edge just a little bit, maybe about the thickness of a piece of paper, which is going to be great. It's going to give me a better finish on this edge right here when I go to slick it up. Uh, I will have to sand it to trim it up some and get them all evened, but not until I've folded it over and sewn it because I want to get all the layers as close to even as I can, get it smoothed out and then slicked up, slick as glass, I hope. Now, one of the things I am going to have to do is uh, I'm going to have to repunch the holes in there. And instead of using my double prong one, I'm going to use the single, which is going to be just barely long enough to go through all three layers of the leather on this one side. I mean, just barely and then repunch all these holes. Okay, I've got my two needles and my one piece of thread here. Gonna do a saddle stitch all the way around this thing. Now I'm gonna start with the stuff that doesn't get sewn together. So I'm gonna start right here at the top of the welt. I'm gonna come all the way around here to the other side of the top of the welt. Then I'll probably do this little bottom section here. And then I can fold it and get it uh, glued together at the welt, at the seam right here, and then do that stitching in there, which will be the five layers of leather I've got to go through. But for right now, I'm just going to do the single stuff. It's only holding the, the lining and the, uh, the front together. Okay, I've got all the single areas here around the skirt, the top, and the bottom of it all stitched up, the single areas only. Now I've got to get this thing folded in half and then uh, get this stitched up, the two seams stitched up, and I've got to glue it. And then I've got to line it up and everything. i got to make sure all my holes line up. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll see me use these. These are blowgun darts, and I use them to line the holes up. I count the holes out, make sure the spacing's right, and then I close it in. All right, Let's get a little water on this on the inside here, and I'm going to get a little water on the outside too. All right, I got it all stitched up, and that's all the thread I had left. You talk about cutting it close. I'm uh, getting pretty good at that. Cutting it close, that is. It would have been nice to have a little bit more thread, but um, it's all stitched together now. Now i got to get this folded over. Um, it's So far, it doesn't look like it's turned out too bad. I will have to soak this entire thing in water. I will fill it up and um, get it completely soaking wet inside and out. Take the uh, revolver and wrap it in plastic and then shove it down in there. And hopefully it'll go in okay. Um, it'll allow me to, I got a little curve to this piece right here and it'll allow me to straighten that out. I've done it on every other one that I've wet molded. It's been the same thing. So I'm not too upset about it if it doesn't come out perfect because I know it can be fixed. It's a lot of work. That's kind of tough, especially, I, I really should have allowed a lot more thread because of the thickness of this. This is five layers. I got the six ounce on the outside. I got a four ounce liner on the inside, I think, and an 11 ounce welt in between there. So there's a lot of material there. All right, let's give this a little bending. Get them lined up right. Don't want to force it too much. You want to just 
force it real quick. Let it let it bend. Let it go gently. But yeah, I think that's going to turn out pretty good. And then I will dip dye this. Um, maybe I might just use uh, some wool daubers and get it in there. And the horse emblem on there will get some dye on it. It should, I hope, it should buff off there pretty good. Yeah, the next thing to do is to um, take this up to the sink, completely soak it. The revolver wet molded in there. I'm going to go do that. I shall return. Okay, so I've got it wet molded. I set it out in the sun for a little while to dry. I kind of wish the curve on the little Paladin emblem there would have been just a little tighter radius on it. It kind of picks up on the edges a little bit. So I'm glad I did not put any glue behind it to try to stick it to the uh, leather because that would it would have just peeled up and there would have been exposed glue there. But it's not terrible. Um, I do have many bags wrapped around this thing. And it is somewhat dry. Let's do a real quick... Uh, fit with the revolver to see how it goes in there. I think it fits in there pretty good. It's just not the right color yet. Yeah, that's not too terrible right there. Still got a lot more work to do. I've got edges to clean up. I've got uh, burnishing to do on the edges. I've got a belt to get finished up. I got a lot of stitching on the belt. There's a ton more work to do. It ain't going to get done by itself though. Okay, everybody, I've got the holster done. I do not have it dyed yet. I want to kind of save all my dyeing for one time here. And this has been kind of a long video, so I hate to rush through the belt part of it. But um, what I did do was this is the next weekend. So what I've done is I went ahead and purchased one of these. And this is one of the most inexpensive oval or slot punches you can get. This is three quarter inch tall, which is what I need to cut these holes out. Um, to get my loop through there and you can see it's already kinked up a little bit because I've already been giving it a try I punched out a few holes just to do a test with it and I probably could have moved these a little closer together But it's a little late now since I've already punched some holes in it But what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get busy punching the rest of these holes in then I got to go around the border and establish my stitch groove and all that kind of stuff and then Lots of holes to punch and then lots of sewing to do and all that good fun stuff. Anyways, I'm going to get busy on this thing and uh, hopefully wrap this video up. All right, guys, you've heard the old adage uh, when you're buying tools, buy once, cry once. That means go ahead and pay for the more expensive tool because it's going to hurt you when you go to buy it, but you're, you're not going to regret it in the future. Now, I did buy one of these. This is a oval or a slotted punch, three-quarter inch, and it did work. The problem is, is when you get a few of these plugged up in there, they, uh, they get stuck right in here. And then not only are you trying to push that sharp edge through the leather, but you're also trying to push these up in there. And this caused me a lot of problems. I had to dig these out. Once I got them dug out, then it went through fine, but I had to do it like every four or five punches and get them out of there. And uh, they do make them with a, uh, a slot. They're a machined piece, a heavier duty piece, and they have a slot on the side there. So as you're punching, they'll just keep popping out of the side kind of like my regular round punches do. This, I would not buy another one of these because I just, for one or two holes, sure, maybe it's fine. But I really, I do plan on doing a couple more holsters like this. I said I didn't like that style of belt loops, but bullet loops, but um, there's another holster I want to do and I think it was done the very same way. Anyways, I'm going to get this stuff out of the way. And then I got to get to marking out and punching holes and everything on this belt. So I've got a ways to go to get everything ready for stitching. Okay, it is time to get some color on all this stuff. 
I am going to dye this with, uh, I've got my old gray Merkin here, and I'm probably going to start with the belt, do these straps, all that good stuff. Now, I'm not going to dye the back side of the belt because it just doesn't need it quite yet because it's going to get uh, suede on the back side of it so that it will be comfortable. And like I said, I've got Phoebing's Pro Dye here in black, and I hope I don't spill any of this because that will make a mess. So let's just get a little bit on here. I do have some paper down and hopefully it'll do all I need it to do. Now this is a piece of wool and we're going to try to get some nice even color on these things. Like I said, I'm going to do the straps first, do the back sides. Oh yeah, that's a nice, rich, deep black right there. I, I should have, I really would have liked to have dip dyed it, but it's kind of a pain to do that because it's, uh, you got to have a container big enough for everything. And then you got to pour it out, pour it back in and all that good stuff. So this seems to be doing just fine. And these straps right here are kind of random because, um, they're going to have to be cut probably. Well, I know they will be. It's way too long for all the bullet loops. All right, now all we got to do is just let it sit after I get the lid back on here. Okay, I was debating on what I was going to use to finish this. Uh, I've already got everything dyed and I've got the edges slicked up on everything but the belt. I'm not going to do the belt yet until after I've sewn, not going to slick the edges on the belt until after I've sewn the suede on the back of it. But I am going to go ahead and treat it and I'm going to treat it with uh, this is Phoebing's Neutral Leather Balm with Atom Wax, and I watched a couple videos from uh, Weaver Leather with Chuck Dorsett, and I, I, I do not want a high gloss finish on the holster, so I was going to use Satin Sheen, and I've had problems in the past where I use Satin Sheen, and when I rub it on, it affects the dye. So I went ahead and did a test piece, just my little billet here from the belt, and I've got almost no dye rub off with this. And I just put it on with a, uh, just these are the heavy duty shop towels, rubbed it on there and uh, then buffed it off. And it is not a gloss finish, which is exactly what I want because uh, Paladin's holster was not high gloss finish on it. Um, so it really, it turns out exactly like I want it. And the leather balm is also a uh, conditioner too. So it really, it should help protect it. It's going to keep the dye from rubbing off and uh, give a nice finish to it and the sheen that I want on it. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of this thing all um, buffed up because I just did this as a practice piece just to make sure it worked and gave me the results I was looking for. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of it. Now I was going to spray on the satin sheen. I was going to use my airbrush, but I'm just going to hand rub it into the holster now and on all the other pieces. And that's the finish I'm going with. Yep, that's exactly what I was going for. Nice semi-gloss on there. Uh, not even really a semi-gloss, kind of a matte, but you can feel it. It's really smooth, slick, and uh, hopefully the wax will help keep it protected some. But uh, the leather balm is supposed to condition the leather somewhat. 
and I think I like it. I have used this before, but I don't remember on what holster I used it. Let's see how this goes. I have got all 30 of my bullet loops on there and I discovered now I know the reason why he only put uh, 27 or 28 on there, the original maker of this belt, because it is a pain. It is a real pain. And you can see here, I do not like the way this come out as I was pulling that leather through there. It gradually pushes those holes open a little bit more and it's curved the top of it. It would be okay if it curved it the other way, it would fit your hips a little bit better. But um, this curved it the wrong way. But there's nothing I can do about that really. I should have used probably a little bit thinner leather for the bullet loops, maybe. Um, I, I think I like the stitched way better, and I'll probably do them that way from now on. I, I said I've got one more belt I want to do that I think is done the same way. So maybe I'll learn something by then. Uh, maybe not. It's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, right? But it's okay, I guess. I did have to stitch it together right there. I got a seam in it. I got it tacked down on the ends right there, and that'll all be covered up with the suede. Uh, it, it adds some extra bulk there that I don't care for too much, but I got to get my billet ends put on here, and then I got to get that holster laced through that slot there so I can get this thing put together and looking like a holster. Let's keep going. Okay, everything is sewn up. I've got the suede sewn on the back of it. I do not like uh, doing that with the, the lacing of the bullet loops in there because it's just, it's too much bulk right there. It would have been a lot nicer to stitch these down with the suede lining on the back. A little dusty on it, it will brush off, but um, it also won't slide down your pants. Now, I do not like this curve that's been induced in this by putting these loops in like that, but it does fit okay. Now the hard part, I gotta get the holster in there. This one too, shouldn't be too bad. This will open up and this I have to curl to get it in there. But let's go ahead and get this thing. Let's go ahead and start fighting with it. in. Yay. Get that flattened back out. All right. Now I need to get a couple holes punched in here so I can put the, uh, the thong in there to tie it down on the leg. All right, I have to do some adjusting to get it where it needs to be. There it is. There is the Paladin holster. 30 bullet loops, suede lined, the Paladin. You know what? Hang on a second. This ain't right. All right, there it is. If you're going to do the Paladin holster, you might as well do the whole Paladin setup. This is the holster I made. It's my version of the holster from the TV series. I do not have an actual pattern for it, so I'm just doing this off of screenshots I've seen from the show. This is set up for an 1873 cavalry model. This is a Cimarron Model P with a 7.5 inch barrel on it, which is what uh, Richard Boone carried in the series, Have Gun, Will Travel. Now, it's not the exact gun. Uh, he didn't use a Cimarron, I'm sure. Well, I, I can't guarantee that. 
But anyways, this is my version of it. And I did take the grips off and put uh, my own grips that I made on there, stained black and a couple coats of true oil on it. The holster itself is made out of six ounce leather on the outside and it's lined with four ounce. I've got the little Paladin emblem that I picked up off of eBay. And I will put a link in the description. If you want to pick one of these up and make one of these holsters, you can check this guy out. He makes these. He makes several different ones. But this one is pretty close to the TV series one. A three inch wide Ranger style belt on it with a not really a clipped corner but a rounded corner uh, center bar buckle on it. Um, I got the ends of it pretty close to what was seen in the series I guess. I maybe could have made that just a little bit longer. Uh, like I said there were 27 or 28 loops on the belt. I went ahead and put 30 on here just because I wanted a correct number of rounds in there you know for the six rounds in the gun. That's five loads in there. I didn't want an odd number in it anyways. Um, that's my version of it anyways. And I, I think it looks pretty good. It's a lot of work doing this, a lot of stitching. I did line it with suede, which is probably not what was done in the TV series, but I've done several holsters lined with suede and I really like them. They, they do not slide on your pants at all, no matter if you've got it really tight or really loose. They still, they grip the clothes pretty good. So, I mean, it's it's my version of it, and I, I think it looks pretty close to the TV series. Let me know what you think down in the description. And um, if you want to make one, just go for it, man. Buy you some leather, buy you a few tools. It's a really fun hobby, and I really enjoy doing it. If you could, reach up here and hit this button to check out some of my other videos, and then hit this button over here to subscribe if you haven't done it already. And thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review.